to give you an idea of how I would communicate sometime with people, uh, in my office, I had a room because it was a historical building, the room in which I saw people for the first visit, which was also an adjusting room. But I had designed that room specifically for the first visit. That room had no window. So when I closed the door, it was pitch black. You couldn't see your hand in front of your eyes. So from time to time, when I felt called to do it, I would walk into the room, close the door, and touch the dimmer switch and kill the light. So now that person is sitting on a table, a dressing table. They were waiting for me. I came into the room. I closed the door and I killed the light. And I would say, that's death. Then I touched the light again. And I said, that's partial life. I increase my, I keep putting my finger on the dimmer. And I said, that's full life. That's what we do in chiropractic. Hi, my name is Arno. You must be Stephen. That was my communication. People got the message. Other time, I would come in, introduce myself, connect with Nick, and say, Hi, Nick, my name is Arno. And I would connect with them, asking them, Tell me what's going on with you, not tell me what your symptoms are, what your complaint is, what your major complaint is. Tell me what is going on with you. And then 99% of the time, people will say, I have this pain, this ache, this symptoms, this disease. And all I have to say is, I understand. In other words, I have, all I have to say is validate what you just told me. Once I have validated, like you must be really suffering with those headaches, and I know how that can impair your life, and I really feel for you. Tell me what is going on with you. Bingo. People start talking about their lives, about what going on, what's going on in their lives. And soon I can make the link between the symptoms that, that they're experiencing and the very nature of their lives and the circumstances of their lives. So I reframed it very quickly. And then when it was time, I would grab, grab the occiput model and I would say, put your finger through it move the atlas and the axis and they would feel like, do you feel that? Yeah, that's compression, right? That's a subluxation. So what we do is uncork the cord by moving the atlas or the axis or any vertebrae below and free the compression. Simple communication, that was it. Time to move on to the neurospinal assessment, to the adjustment to the potential response to the adjustment, and then to how frequently they should come back. End of the story. So that's my answer to you, Nick, and everybody else. It's not this complex thing, you know, I think you have an experience when you were young that potentially you didn't integrate properly, and we're gonna free that experience and that energy and liberate that energy out of your system, and that may affect your symptoms, but you know, See, and people are lost. They're like, what are you talking about? So keep it very simple, very kinesthetic, very visual. Use common street language. Don't start to say, you know, the cerebral hemisphere generate life force, which is called a forun, which is a unit, you know, a unit of life force. And that flow down the spinal tract and there is ascending and descending tract and it comes out through the IVF. I mean, people are like, what the hell are you talking about? Are you with me? Just simple communication. Yeah, it's almost so simple that it's like shocking to hear you say that all you did was take the model, do that, and it's just like, it's like kind of shocking. It's like, wait, it really, that's all it has to be. <laughs> That's all it has to be. The public doesn't care anything about anything, but can you connect with them? Do they feel loved and heard by you? And then what, what is the service that you render? You know, the dentist doesn't go like, you know, it just open your mouth and you start working, right? It doesn't go, you know, you have a tooth here, 
and it's part of all the whatever number of teeth that you have in your mouth. And there is an incisive here and a molar over here. And in the molar, there is three miles of lymphatic duct in each molar. And I'm going to drill through it and probably damage some lymphatic duct. And there may be some blood coming out of your gum. What the hell? No. Open your mouth. <laughs> right? Same thing. Same thing. Just direct communication, street language, very simple, very common sense. So if some of you are in early quarter, record or write, how do you convey chiropractic right now to people? And is it successful? Are people saying, can you give me the name of a chiropractor? I want, I know, I want to make an appointment. Or can I come see you in the clinic? I want to make an appointment. If they don't, after you talk to them, then revise the way you talk to them. But then, if you're successful, and the most successful people are pre chiropractic people or first quarter, then write it down, seal it in an envelope, and when you graduate, wash yourself of your education by taking six months off or eight months off, whatever, nine months off, wash yourself of your education, reopen that envelope and communicate in that simple language to the public.